Welcome to Essentials Explained. In this video, we'll be discussing tactical tips for checking your Excel workbook. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. Otherwise, let's jump right in. So let's talk about some of the tactical tips for checking your Excel workbook. So number one is to build these checks at the bottom of your file. We've already done this. We've gone through this. We've tried to check our file as we've been building it, which is great. One thing to point out, we use these equal signs and this works here. This is fine. This won't always work because sometimes you're going to have an instance where Excel rounds a formula or Excel rounds a number somewhere that's, you know, maybe zero 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 one and so you can't really see it where if i take this number and i say equals this total this says it's true because i didn't update that correctly but if i do that i get false right and if i was looking at these i'd try to figure out you know hey uh, that, that still looks pretty good like how how is this different quick way to do just a check to see what might be causing this evaluate formula so alt mv we'll pull up this evaluate formula and c60 you see it will show you the full extent of your number so you can pretty quickly see oh this is being caused by a decimal point that is one way to find it how can you avoid these errors so instead of just using this equal sign you can actually just write a pretty simple if statement so if um i'm just gonna use the absolute value so that i don't need to deal with negative versus positive and if i take uh, this number minus this number and say less than I think you know, zero 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 one is probably a fine threshold you can do whatever you want and I say you know if that's true true and then I'll just leave false empty fine so this works right if I were to do this and instead of utilizing it with these two ranges maybe I just subtracted this number instead, I would still get true. Even though these numbers aren't exactly the same, it will still show me, you know, hey, this difference that you're seeing is so small, we still wanna treat this as, as if it's true. So one way to do that, another kind of nifty thing you can do is utilize conditional formatting. So Alt H L will pull up conditional formatting. Let's say you want to highlight anything that is equal to false. So equal to, I'll just put false, maybe light red fill with dark red text. So if I hit okay, obviously nothing shows because these numbers all pie. And so if I actually just maybe just change this to D27, just to show how this works, you can see how really easy it is to identify where bus are in my model. So these trues are a little bit smaller. And if you want to, you could, you know, maybe make this font like a, a dark gray, if you kind of wanted to hide it a little bit more, I think that kind of looks a little bit nice, but you know, personal preference. And then this conditional formatting, you could, you know, come up here, alt a H L R will help you pull up your, your different rules. And you can come in here, edit rule, and if you want to change this format, you can say, you know, maybe I want this to be bold and um, I like this color. Maybe I want it, you know, green instead. And so if you do that, hit apply. Okay. You can see you just updated that format. I like the first format. I think that works for me, but this is a way to be able to identify errors in your model very, very easily. And so if I delete some of these because they are not going to work because they're looking up either on text strings or characters. I can have a really well formatted check at the bottom of my model. I'll delete this. So I think this page is looking pretty good. One thing on my sum ifs, maybe I want to change this column to make it a little bit smaller. I'll take your W, you know, five, and then I can probably just copy this um, formatting. Paste special, control alt V W will paste your column widths. I have an extra column here. I can delete that control space, control minus sign. This is looking pretty good. I can drag these borders over. I think that looks good. I have an extra row here. I'd actually wanted to keep this consistent so that I have the same spacing. So shift space, will pull that up. Control minus, we'll delete the row. So this check isn't working, right? I think it's actually just checking a, a random cell right now, but 
what we've done is we've done a simple division. So maybe you don't need a check in this instance. Maybe you trust yourself to build in this formula and just do it off a total. I think that's probably fine. If you wanted to check this, there's a pretty simple way to check your totals. What you want to do is make sure this total reflects the sum of all its component pieces. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the total average selling price and subtract the sum product of all of my different average selling prices, all of my different quantities, and then divide that by the total quantity. And so you can see that ties, right? If I blow this out, you can see that works. I'll just pull up evaluate formula. So alt MV and show you how this works. K12. So this is my average selling price, right? 16.499. My sum product will be my average selling price for each category multiplied by each quantity. And so that gives me my total revenue, right? So 831781 that ties with my 2020 revenue. And then I've just divided that by my total quantity, which is the 5413, gives me an average selling price of exactly the same of 16.499. So one quick way you can check that, right? You could also do this with an equal sign. And that's another way just to double check your file. Maybe I don't want to show these. Maybe I just want to hide these. I could select these rows. So shift space, shift alt right arrow will make it into a group. Alt H will close it. And so I could do that again and I could, you know, make this a group and I alt H will close it. So quick bonus tips on groups. You can click these to open them individually. You can click them to hide them. You can also use these numbers at the top. So if I click here, open and close my different groups. You can also highlight a selection and use shortcuts. So Alt A H will collapse all your groups. Alt A J will expand them. A couple quick ways working with groups. Again, number of different ways to do this depends on your personal preference and how you want to use Excel. So in our count ifs, what do we have here? One thing I actually do want to change is I've obviously been calling this customer, let's just call this franchisee for now because that is obviously a little confusing. I can do that manually here, right? I could just change this to franchisees and then change this to you know average franchisee size. Probably a little bit more concise because that's actually what these are, not customers. Again, I could do this same thing. So, you know, select the row, close it, select the row, close it. That makes this a little bit cleaner, a little bit easier to read. We have built in the checks on these different sections. So these checks are still broken. We can update these, right? This is the same thing we just walked through on our sum ifs output page. So if I want to double check this, cause I'm a stickler, I will go up here equals some product of my average order size multiplied by the number of orders divided by the number of orders. And that should tell me whether or not my average order size is correct, right? Alt MV will give me a value formula. I can see the average order size, which is $1,848 divided by my total revenue divided by the number of orders, which ties great. So next we have this franchisee count, which has an old check in it. If you remember, you watched that video what we had done is we'd actually built in a check down here. So we'd use the pivot table. Um, and distinct count of owner. And so what this will do is this will tell us the distinct count in our data. And so if I drag maybe ownership category on here, I can see the different groups and then I can see the grand total of the distinct number of franchisees. This is just LTM. So if I wanted to, you know, maybe copy this and I'll paste it above and instead of LTM, I wanted um, my year column. I can really, really quickly check this. And so I could go, you know, number of franchisees is equal to number of franchisees in 2020 and 21 that drags over. And then if I wanted to check LTM, I could use, you know, LTM is equal to LTM. And so that ties, if you're an absolute stickler and want to check every little thing, what you can do is insert a couple rows here. So shift space to select the whole row shift control plus sign will insert rows for you. You see, I inserted those and it keeps it in the group. 
This is a nice little way to do that. What I could do is I could come up here and I could check 2020 and make sure this ties with corporate, large, small franchisee. I could drag that over and down and then I could you know, do the same thing for LTM. This is probably a little bit of overkill, but if you're, you know, super into this, this is another way you could do it. Last thing, average franchisee size, right? We can just do this as the same, literally the same thing we did for average order size. So average franchisee size is going to be the equal to the sum product of your average franchisee size multiplied by the number of franchisees divided by the total number of franchisees, right? We can see that's true. Another way we could have done that is we could have just copied this, right? The way we built this formula is we used all relative references. So super easy if you just want to, you know, copy this, drag it over. That's another way to do it instead of rewriting it, but either one works. So if I highlight all these cells, Alt H will collapse all my different groups. And I think this is looking pretty good. Obviously you have a bunch of this junk down here, but I think it's probably fine. One quick item of cleanup, right? This is our owner lookup. So I'll just rename this. Alt H O R will pull up owner lookup. Alt H O T will pull up your column color. I'm actually gonna make this maybe like a light orange cause it's a lookup, but it's, you know, technically pulling off our working data. So I don't want to put it in my lookup section because I think that's confusing. And then here we have, you know, our small franchisee uh, output. And if I, you know, wanted to clean this up quickly, what I would probably do is actually just, you know, drag over the formatting for one of these. So if I copied, you know, some ifs output and maybe just, you know, literally deleted all these rows. What I can easily do is come back here and just copy this. So control X, paste it in here. Um, you'll need to drag this down, but that's obviously pretty fast. And then you can drag this over. And so this is built a little bit quicker, right? Maybe this is your, this is your check column. And so if you want to group that, you can group the column, Alt H will hide it. Um, here are your notes, here's your different stuff. Maybe you want to, you know, make those a little bit bigger. Alt H Y will auto format your columns. And if you want to hide, you know, this filter, you can do that with a group, pull up your groups. You want to group the rows, Alt H will hide that. And so if this is fine, this is just another way to look at it. You know, you could delete this border, Alt H B N will delete that. Maybe you want to make this column a little bit smaller. Here's kind of a simple way to do it. Alt H O R, right? Rename it to small franchisee output. It's going to yell at me. So I'll just call this output two. And then I can delete this. Alt E L. I can rename this now small franchisee output. If you're interested in understanding how to utilize number formats in Excel, please check out the next video in our series. Otherwise, thank you for joining us at Essentials Explained. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you.